What's going on, people? Welcome to the family. And today we're going to be talking about the fear of homelessness while going into the art path. So chances are, if people are fear homelessness while accessing or going towards the the art path, they're probably doing something else. Like for example, if there's an artist in college, he or she's probably doing computer science or something else while setting art aside as a hobby and although his or hers passion may not be in con in computer science there's still a fear of homelessness or not being able to make ends meet in this society and that would make sense because money is necessary for our survival and some may go to like the extremes of you know sacrificing your soul for it etc etc but you know this is not just only like computer science but you know like everything else like it could be business or or anything else and you're like and those these people suppress their uh you know their actual passion whatever it may be most likely it's art and so the downside to this would be like if you're going in completely into something that's unrelated to your passion let's say for example let's say let's compare the two differences of of comics and computer science so a person who's passionate about comics while he's doing computer science may wonder what's the difference between him or her versus the computer science person that's effortlessly coding and smiling away as to what some may consider you know a computer science genius and that difference will be that the the other person just has passion passion for the subject that he's doing and i feel that a per, you will you won't really get to that level that the computer science kid is if you aren't passionate about the subject that you're doing and so the comic artist's genius doesn't lie in the topic of computer science. It lies in the topic of comics, which he is passionate about. And there will always be challenges in these subjects, but the difference is tackling the challenges with, you know, love, passion, with a smile, as opposed to something that just feels like work. Now, to get to the meat of fear of fear of homelessness in art, we have to think about where the term of, you know, starving artist came about. Where did it originate from? Maybe the past during Vincent van Gogh's era, you know, and then that's when it started trending. But, you know, I could be wrong. It probably didn't happen back then in that era. But, you know, it was back then when the Internet wasn't invented, when we could not access the Internet. So today, I, f I feel artists are living in much more easier times compared to what was going on in the past. Because with the internet, it's connecting us to billions of people in an instant. You know, we have access to learn for free. And much, much more things are possible with the internet. But anyway, I'm not saying that, you know, an, a starving artist doesn't exist today because of the newly made internet. What I am saying is that it's gotten a heck of a lot easier compared to how it was in the past, where the term starving artist may have originated from. And so again, we're living in the information age, the, uh, the fast connecting age, so to say. And, you know, that means you could, you know, look up tutorials on marketing yourself for for better businesses business decisions you know look up other people's experiences mimic their advice you know connect with loads of people in, in an instant it's just a matter of how much time you want to put into these daily activities but yeah it has gotten a lot better for artists compared to the past you know but who knows what would be the the next greatest thing the next greatest thing compared to the internet or so like better than the internet later in the future but you know if you still find yourself fearful of being homeless while accessing or going towards the the artist path i would you know ask you ask myself 
you know, if I were in your situation. Like, what's, like, so bad about experiencing these extremes, you know? So, I, I personally thought about this before. So, I'd imagine myself, you know, staying at a crowded homeless shelter f at my local city and, you know, attending the uh, local soup kitchen uh, Thursdays and Fridays while sometimes visiting the public library, drawing, making comics, improving, accessing the internet, seeking new ways to, you know, get myself out of the homeless situation with the internet and, you know, perhaps, you know, start some freelance with my skills or so. But but let's just say that I couldn't make money out of freelance. I mean, what what you can, but let's just say I couldn't, you know, you could just, you know, continue to improve until you can. And, and I'd probably like, uh, you know, look for weekly events at my local library, go there for the free food and leave. Uh, maybe make, make friends, make some connections, you know, intentionally choose to draw in like semi crowded places. You know, someone may come up asking you like, uh, asking you, Oh, could you draw me something? And then you'll have a long conversation. You'll bond, you'll access some friendships. Also, that's a, access to free food socializing is going to be key to your survival so i would look up you know probably like self-help tips on making friends or public speaking you know I, I don't even know where i'm going to get my clothes from but there's there are probably places where you can get clothes but you know in all honesty in all honesty i really don't know what i would do if i was homeless or like the actions i will take you know but basically, I would just do like a, a loads, loads of, you know, just research in personal experience and, you know, lots of Googling and, you know, just asking why homeless people would prefer to sleep outside over, at, you know, um, homeless shelters, etc. I would like go really in depth with the, uh, the, with the analyzing, you know, use your imagination. And, and like, you know, spend a week looking and analyzing all of the research that you've obtained and see if this is the path you think you can handle, you know? And, and although I haven't experienced homelessness myself, I know of several YouTubers that have experienced homelessness and they kept on going until they eventually just got to where they, they are at the moment, you know? until they eventually got big sort of say but yeah i feel that uh using your imagination to visualize all these different scenarios if you did become homeless while at the same time using the research that you gathered from you know the internet or so would uh i feel kind of ease the the uh, ease the fear of homelessness so I'm right now I'm going to share some personal experience so I'm currently doing a computer graphics imaging major a BS like a bachelor's in science which is like a, a mixture of art and science and before before I transferred to this new school I, I was I had I was doing a uh, an associates in fine arts at a at a local community college and so I decided to go into computer graphics imaging because I saw it as an opportunity to you know graduate early because I just wanted to get out of there you know and so and also it was also affordable and also that uh, a BS would you know be, hold much more weight to it compared to a uh, a, a f uh, bachelor's in arts I think was what it's called like a uh, a BA versus a, a BS you know so e even though in the uh, computer graphics imaging ma major I'm required to take a take programming classes and math classes I still took it anyway and so, like, one time in my schedule, I had, like, two of the challenging classes that weren't art, 
which I later found out that, you know, advisors don't recommend to take both of the classes at the same time. So, you know, although these classes were challenging, the issue is I didn't enjoy it. And so not only was I miserable, but my mind and my time needed to be fully involved in these uh, programming and math classes. But yeah, these classes were like really hectic. Like I could say one, one for example, one of the classes, for example, like during the final exams, uh, like there was like a few people that had panic attacks during the exam. And, you know, some and, and in my other class, there were like a few people, like half of the class fail, failed the exam, you know. And in one of my classes, like, I had this not-so-good teacher, so I had to, you know, use YouTube and Google a new teacher to teach me the material. So, yeah, my time was really consumed. But, like, like I was really willing to die for these classes. Like, I went full-on warrior mode for, th for these two classes, you know. And, you know, granted, I wasn't passionate about it, so... Even though I went full on warrior mode, it would have probably been a really miserable death compared to a happy one if I was doing something that that I was passionate about. Now, like now, majoring in in something requires you to be like a, a full on master in that craft that you're mastering. So you know, I wasn't really enjoying. Uh, math and these programming classes and in the back of my head I was like I should be drawing something you know but you know if I was passionate about the math and computer science classes then I'd, I'd be like hey keep it coming keep it coming but that wasn't the case and I think most likely I would have failed one of the classes if I didn't have my online friend um, helping me along the way and mentoring me because he's like a whiz in one of the programming he's like a whiz in one of the programming languages so so in one class I was YouTubing a better teacher to teach me and in another class I had assistance from an online friend and that that class was you know a programming class and you know you can't really like program well, you, you can't really YouTube programming, but I mean, you can, but it, it's a lot more complicated than just YouTube programming or Googling a programming question. It, it's much more complicated than that. And, you know, mind you, this was just for one semester. And I imagined myself, hey, what if I went full on computer science major for like four years? You know, yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't think if I did go that path of, you know, going computer science for like four years, uh, I wouldn't have gotten this far with my art or even be on YouTube at the moment, you know. I'd probably be doing something else completely different entirely. But yeah, when I was taking those two classes, I did feel like I was dying on the inside. And one of my teachers from that class, you know, told the students that, you know, had you know, poor exam grades during, like, the middle of the semester to, like, drop out or whatnot. But, you know, I was one of those guys. I was one of those people that she told us to drop out, but, you know, I didn't do it. You know, I, I still passed the class with, uh, you know, a magic 80. But, um, yeah, like in like an 80 for, for the final, that is. But, yeah. So, like, closing words, closing words, like, the best route, I feel, logically, would probably be to do something where the money leads, but the illogical one will be to, you know, just risk it all and just have faith, and, like, having faith in yourself, you know, and not, you know, lying to yourself, saying that you believe in yourself, I mean, like, honestly thinking that you can do it, you know? And faith is like the opposite spectrum of logic. Therefore, faith is illogical. But in some cases, in some cases, the illogical option of faith ends up being the best choice for some people, and sometimes not. But you know that's life. Life is like a a pretty bumpy roller coaster, you know. But yeah, decide what you want to do with your life. You know, take this advice slash story. Uh, and you just use it 
or not use it you know it's up to you and although this video is kind of biased in deciding for your deciding this video is biased in you know deciding where you want to go with your passion you have the utmost decision in deciding for yourself so yeah that'll be it and you know like subscribe comment etc and later guys